Arab Phil Karim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We have a very provocative message this evening. The title in here, as you're looking on, or at least the title on Sputnik News, Jordan planning to deploy troops in Syria. Coordination with U.S. Now, this is from President Bashar al-Assad in an interview that he did with Sputnik. And a lot of people are going to quickly say, well, they don't trust anything that Assad has to say because he used sarin gas on his own people. Well, tonight we're going to get into that debate once again uh, with some very powerful evidence that I believe that uh, should be really considered. And I know that there's, there are some out there saying that we are fake news because we have actually challenged the narrative on uh, the sarin gas attack there inside of Syria. Um, and of course, if, as I've stated before, if President Bashar al-Assad did gas his own people, I'm 100% behind uh, President Trump going in and overthrowing this man from the government. Not one moment would I be against President Trump in doing something like that. But my question is, is that I think that this is being jumped to the conclusion even the Tomahawk cruise missiles that were launched as a retaliatory measure was done almost immediately after the sarin gas attack occurred. And there was no investigation done, not even given a chance to even see whether or not this was really done by President Bashar al-Assad. And of course, the U.S. is still holding to the 2013 that Bashar al-Assad gassed his own people when there is an overwhelming amount of evidence just to the contrary. Now, as I stated, we're actually called by some a fake news. Not the first time. We get that from time to time. And I believe a lot of times it's because we're dead on in a bullseye. In fact, it normally lets me know that we're hitting home pretty hard because there are some operatives out there that would like to uh, try to discredit what we're saying. They like to think that, well, we're just sitting here behind a laptop and don't really know what we're talking about. We don't live there. We're not part of the Israeli military or anything like that. Well, let me kind of clarify some of the sources that we do have that might give a little bit more respect on what we're saying here. We have more than one journalist, by the way, investigative journalists that have been on the ground not once, but many times inside of Syria since the Civil War that have also been involved in interviewing on both sides of the line, both the Assad and the rebels, and finding out a balance about what goes on. I'm able to confer with those journalists because I do have a friendly relationship with them about things that are happening. I do have some friends in the Israeli army as well, including one officer. Now, when I look at these things here, and besides the fact of not sitting just behind a laptop, as you guys well know, we are on the ground everywhere, including Israel, including things that are breaking in Europe, including when uh, the uh, Israel was being bombarded uh, by the United Nations, 70 plus nations come against them in Paris, France. We were there. And in fact, most news companies would have never known where it was at had they not been watching Israeli News Live because we uncovered the actual place with some of your help there. We have actual friends that live inside of Syria as well uh, that we're able to find out things that are going on. Two of those friends happen to be Christian believers. Both of them strong supporters of President Bashar al-Assad. One of our friends from America has his own family living there. So we have all types of connections. And of course, I was formerly in the military. I normally ever talk about that, but I was. My entire family, all military. All right, that doesn't have anything to do with Israel, but I'm just trying to show you. We have all types of resources from every angle, every avenue you can imagine. And when it comes to Israel, you know, also, we've been, we, we are past security as Israeli News Live by the Knesset itself. Uh, we've interviewed Rabbi Yehuda Glick before. We've actually interviewed MK members from three different nations already as Israeli News Live. We are also israelinewslive.co.il. And if you ever have had a .co.il, it requires you to be a legal organization before you can obtain a web domain from Israel. You, if you run that into your search browser, it should redirect you to israelinewslive.org. So we are considered a real news source, not just a fake news. Now, it doesn't mean that everybody shares our opinions. I am for one state, by the way, on Israel. And I've got a lot of people that, that appreciate our honesty and stand when it comes to the Syrian conflict because we don't just throw our Syrian friends under the bus. 
And not every Israeli does. You know, there's a lot of Israelis that, are, that, that, are, that care about the Syrian people and don't just think that they're some kind of wicked, evil people. And in fact, probably the only time uh, in modern history that Israel has enjoyed some peace from Syria is since President Bashar al-Assad has been the president of Syria. It's not been such a rosy bed of uh, relationship beforehand. And yet at the same time, the United States has been plotting the overthrow of the Syrian government since 1986. We'll get into that a little bit later. But we try to be a little bit more fair and balanced. We remember, too, that the Torah stated, that Moses stated to the children of Israel when we were coming into the Promised Land, he said, do not war with the children of Ammon or the children of Moab. These are Lot's children. He said, I have given them this land as an inheritance. So even though when I refer back to the 1920 uh, League of Nations agreement that the, Jor Jordan, the country of Jordan was given over to the Jordanians in 1922, I don't really begrudge that because that was for the children of Ammon. Or in this case, the pre chief princes of Ammon, which are the Jordanians. And when it comes to the Moabites, these are your Palestinians. But the only thing is, is they have moved them over into the West Bank on the west side of the Jordan River, which I'm not in agreement with. But I don't believe that we should just throw them out of the country either. That's why I'm for one state with giving them the right to be citizens and live peacefully together. But unfortunately, there are powers to be, like even in the Israeli government, where there are powers inside the Israeli government like under the case of Shimon Peres, where 60% of the Israeli land has been given over to the Vatican. Why did that ever happen? Who allowed something like this? That's against the Torah as well, isn't it? But we are to try to live peacefully with our neighbors. And Syria is no different. Did we forget that the very mothers of Israel, Rachel, Rachel, and Leah, are actually Syrians? Their father Laban was a Syrian. And in fact, remember the very covenant that was made between Laban and Jacob. They put the pile of rocks not far from the border there. If you cross over this to do me harm, then God will judge you. And if you cross, you know, Laban saying to Jacob, if you cross over, then God will look up and judge you as well. So there was a covenant made. I realize it's been broken down through biblical history and even in modern history as well. But my point is, is we should try to live peace, peaceably together, especially in light of the fact if Bashar al-Assad is really not guilty. But if he is guilty of gassing his own people, believe me, I'll be the first one to say he did it. There was an investigation. Both Russia and the United States cooperated together. The Syrian government cooperated together. They have proven without a fact that Bashar al-Assad did it, then the man should be ousted. And then if it can't be done in a peaceful means, then if the, if the US, if President Trump has to go in there and take him out, I have no problem with that. Because that would be the most barbaric thing you could do to your own people. But as the question has been brought up, why would Bashar al-Assad use sarin gas against his own people when he's doing so well in the war to begin with? That's one of the questions. But there's been too many other issues that have come up that have really questioned whether or not he actually did it. And then again, why did the United States retaliate so rapidly without even, even the remotest opportunity for an investigation? Was it because of his daughter began to weep over what the children that were dying? I, I weep for him as well because for me, the Syrians are Syrians. It doesn't matter if they're loyal to Bashar al-Assad or if they're loyal to the rebels. They're still Syrians. They're still human beings. These are still children. Yes, it does matter. And I agree with that. But you're going to find out in our today's broadcast, even though it's a lengthy broadcast, you really should listen to all of this. You're going to find out that the group that the United States is backing is one of the most murderous and most evilest of all the groups that there could possibly be. Is that what Israel's going to end up for a, for, the, for a neighbor? Look at Erdogan practically declaring himself a caliphate. Is he going to end up being our neighbor in Syria because he gets to take over the country once uh, President Trump's, after we go in with the coalition and wipe out this country and wipe out President, er, uh, President Assad? That man can't never make up his mind what he feels about Israel. One day he likes us, the other day he doesn't. One day he likes us, the other day he doesn't. So... 
I think we really should take a long look into what we're doing here. And again, as I stated there, you guys know, Israeli News Live, we've been, we've been right there, not actually inside of Syria, but right there to the border, with the bombs going off and everything around us. And as I stated again, with credible, bona fide, authentic journalists that we know, investigative journalists that have been on the ground, that we're able to confer with and speak about things that are going on to get inside information of what's happening. Journalists that are willing to look at both sides of the story, not just one side of the propaganda. And my desire is to bring you the truth. I'm not in here to sugarcoat it. I love the Israeli people because they are my people. I am a Jew both by my mother and my father. Ashkenazi on my mother and I'm a Sephardic Jew on my father's side. But I don't agree with everything that the government does. And neither does any Israeli. Barry Chamish, the late Barry Chamish, who was a, was a good friend of mine, he's been on Israeli news several times that he came on our, on our program. He confided many things to me. Barry Chamish was a veteran of the Israeli military and a veteran of the Lebanese war that was fought, a bloody war that was fought with Lebanon. And that man exposes more that the government was doing that was evil than you could ever imagine. The late Joel Bainerman, I wish I'd had the privilege of meeting Joel Bainerman. Barry Chamish and Joel were very good friends. Another Israeli investigative journalist. And he as well exposed what the Vatican was doing in the taking over of the land. And he says to the Jewish people, you may giggle and laugh about the prophetic things that the Catholic Church thinks about, but you need to be aware of what they think because they're trying to bring biblical prophecy to pass according to their own doctrine. He goes much deeper into that. He exposes the Oslo Accords and what uh, Shimon Perez was doing and giving away the land and giving away Jerusalem. See, I'm against all of these things here. I stand for my people when it comes to those things there. But I'm not against the Palestinians. I am against the Palestinians doing terrorism against us. I know so. I was spared by the grace of God of a suicide bombing in 2004 up at French Hill on September the 22nd. So I know full well what it's like to go through a terrorist attack. So I have a heart for my people. I know what goes on there. I've lived in Israel as well. Not just of Israel, I've lived there. And I do know what's going on. I have many, many friends in Israel. Many, many Israelis that view this broadcast. Many of them that write me as well. So we know what's going on. But the difference is, rather than just bringing you a greater Zionist view, and I don't mean this in any disrespect to anyone, but I am not for the Rothschild Zionist project of defeating all of the Middle East and killing all the people there, and that now we're going to live in peace. If that was the case, do you think that God would have ever instructed Moses to go and, uh, do you think he would have instructed him to leave the, 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 the children of Ammon alone, to leave the Moabites alone? I've given them this land, not, not the land where they're trying, where they've eased over into there. That's created a problem. I agree. But he said to Moses, leave them alone. Says to Joshua the same thing, leave them alone. We were to drive out the Perizzite, the Hivite, the Hittite, the Canaanites. Why? Do you remember what they were? That's, that's the Nephilim embedded people. That's that demonic group. The Anunnaki that was inbred with all these people that created giants. That's why we were to drive them out. They were part of the fallen demonic beings. That's why. You think God would just give a license to go kill human beings that are descendants of Adam and Eve? No. But when you have descendants that are from demons, that's a little different story. All right, let's get into this broadcast here. Some are going to say, wow, this is crazy, Steve. You're looking at Sputnik News and Sputnik saying Jordan planning to deploy troops in Syria, coordinating with the U.S. This is something that President Bashar al-Assad said. Wow, the guy that uses sarin gas on children. How could you believe anything he has to say? All right, well, Sputnik News is reporting it, but we're going to get into the news now. Let's break it down and let's see what's going on, guys. And I can tell you, I could be wrong on things. I'm not saying that I'm foolproof by no means, but I will tell you, when I am wrong, I'll apologize, I'll come tell you. In fact, a good brother of mine says to me the other day, I did the bricks thing. He said, Steve, you said uh, 
I forget what I said for the, for the S part on there, but I got it wrong. And I'm not going to try to say it again what it was, but I did get it wrong, and he corrected me on it. And uh, I told him, I said, well, you know, brother, dyslexia kicks in every time, messes me up. And I, don't, I can't always pronounce everything just right anyway, but God knows my heart, and I, and I trust that that's what you guys are looking at as well as my heart. I'm not here to deceive you or to, or to just show some um, fantastic story. All right, so we're here just to try to inform you the best we can. Let's get into this right away here. So anyway, so this is what Assad was saying, is he's claiming as well that the U.S. is inside of Jordan and that they are planning to cross into Syria. We reported this to you on April the 9th of 2017. U.S. and U.K. forces crossing into Syria from Jordan, as you can see here on the screen and behind you here, right? All right, but here's what gets interesting. We took this from an Israeli news site, newsru.co.il. Now, it is in the Russian language. Of course, we did use Google to translate it over, but as I've stated so many times before, my family speaks Russian. My wife, my father-in-law both can speak Russian with no problem. Uh, oh, that was one of the things I do need to stand corrected on. Somebody did make a comment. My wife busted me as well when I said that uh, my father-in-law served in the Soviet military. Uh, the Slovakia was not part of the Soviet Union. It was part of the Warsaw Pact. I, I need to make that correction while I'm here. But as my wife stated, what people don't realize, though, is we were completely controlled by, the, by Russia, by the Soviet Union. All the militaries were controlled by the Soviet Union. All the school, everything that was in there, all the propaganda of Lenin and everything. We could not enter into the uh, eastern part of Europe, or excuse me, the western part of Europe. We were banned from going in there. She said everything is as if you were in the Soviet Union like the other Soviet blocs, but we, could, we were considered part of the Warsaw Pact. Uh, but yeah, he was an officer in the military uh, of, in Slovakia there. And of course, you know, uh, MiGs were part of his uh, domain that he worked with and stuff like that. And he said the same thing as well. Everything is Russian. He said, even though we were technically not part of the Soviet Union, he said, we might as well been part of the Soviet Union because we were controlled completely by Russia. All right, so I wanted to clar clarify that up. But anyway, this news site here is a, a Russian news site, but it is from uh, Israel.co.il because why? We have 2 million Russian-speaking Israelis living inside the land, so they actually have their own news source here. And I made this news in part because of this, as I said, in part, it wasn't my only source here, but Media Jordan, Media Jordan, Jordan the U.S. and Britain began operation on Syrian border. border. According to the exiting London newspaper, the Al Hyatt, with references to political sources in Jordan, the United States Armed Forces, the United Kingdom, and Jordan will begin a joint operation against the terrorists in the Jordanian Syrian border. All right? So we were already seeing this, and this is up according to what the article was stating up there. It was up by the uh, uh, the northern part of Jordan to the far east, close to the Iraqi Syrian border there. And as I noted on there, if they go in right there, then they are perfectly in line to go west, back west to Damascus to overthrow Bashar al-Assad. And as you remember also, we reported at the same time that back in February, U.S. generals were in Lebanon on February, I think it's the 27th, uh, hold me to that date exactly, but they were making agreements with Lebanon to bring more military equipment in there to also help with the overspill of the Syrian war into Lebanon. Why so much military equipment being brought in there? By the way, as far as I know, it's not been unloaded off the ship, but the ship's still sitting there awaiting for that to be unloaded. So they're not doing that as of yet because they don't want you to get a bunch more pictures and realize what, uh, uh, what NATO is up to there. Now, again, as we brought that information out, this was, of course, after uh, the Syrian chemical attack, and this is one of the famous pictures that even doctors we're quoting, I'm talking about medical professionals that know about sarin gas. And let me just point this out. We're going to blow this up. I really want you to be able to see this the best you possibly can right here. All right. This is sarin gas, supposedly children that are victims of sarin gas. Okay. Notice this man here. He's not wearing gloves whatsoever. Now this guy is. But even with the gloves, it's not even protective clothing. It's not the right type. They were given a month earlier than that, though, the protective clothing for cases such as this. And in fact, 
as one journalist points out, it's actually was given and they were using it and trying it pictures from the exact same location as where this is happening. Now I bring this up because one of the doctors and one of the uh, a medical scientists as well points out that there is no way that this man could be washing a child off that was uh, that had been hit with sarin gas barehanded. He says because he would have died. One drop of sarin gas is lethal to a, to a full grown man. So they're wearing a mask and everything, but their hands are totally bare. And this is why they question whether or not it was even sarin gas. I think on their view there, it looks like it's got a, he's got a red hand, but if you look at the picture here, he doesn't have a red hand. I think it's just the contrast, just to let you know that. All right, so that's what was very disturbing uh, to me is that, um, uh, and by the way, this article here is what they're saying Russia is complaining about the investigation of Assad's chemical attack. Their U.S. is not allowing Russia access to this. Uh, let's look a little bit about this real quick on here. Russia has complained again about the international investigation into the Assad regime's deadly chemical attack on a town of northwest Syria almost three weeks ago. Since a regime warplane fired a missile with a nerve agent into Khan Shekhun on April the 4th, killing at least 93 people and wounding almost 600. Now, the article here is automatically condemning uh, Assad as if he actually did the attack. But anyway, it says, Moscow has held a, a conflicting line on an inquiry. It has maintained that it supports an investigation while blocking a UN resolution that mandates the Assad regime to cooperate with the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. On Friday, Russian Foreign Ministry Sergei Lavrov told U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson that Moscow's issue is the exclusion of Moscow's personnel from the investigation. According to the State Department, Lavrov said that Russia regrets U.S. opposition to its involvement. And that makes ever sense in the world. Why would the U.S. not being allowed or would not allow Russian scientists to be a part of the investigation of sarin gas? That is an absolute bias approach to it. If you have nothing to hide, then why don't you allow a joint effort to investigate whether or not Bashar al-Assad really did gas his own people? I mean, let's look at the facts, friends. If it was so, and he dropped the bomb, the fragments of the bomb are there, which they were there. They ain't there no more, no doubt. And if they are not there, I'm sure they could easily be uh, dumped all kinds of gas on them. But I think what the real point is, if it was a bomb that was used, that was, was a bomb with sarin gas, the evidence of that type of bomb is what would prove or disprove that fact. And that's something that Russia would like to get their hands on. But unfortunately, the State Department is just not going to allow Russia in there in this investigation. I guess at least you have more time to tamper with evidence. And that's a major red flag again, unlike this, just like this one here as well. Major red flags. All right. Now, here's the other thing that was interesting that we brought out. and We've shared this with you guys already. And if you look here on the date on your screen here, this is April the 3rd, 2017, the day before the sarin gas attack, right? We reported U.S. moves military equipment in striking distance of Damascus. Why? We were already seeing through the very tracking uh, efforts by uh, Lorenzo on Already Happened, who is an Italian investigative journalist, uh, who was tracking the movements of U.S. ships that were loaded with military equipment, one to Lebanon, the other to Jordan. And those things were being tracked. Uh, although they had not, I think on April the 3rd, the one to Lebanon had actually already uh, reached its destination because we were covering this, I think, even on the 2nd of April. So we were seeing the U.S. moving everything into position for taking down the Assad regime, but I guess there was just nothing yet to justify that reason to take him down. So that is suspicious also within itself. And we didn't make up the news. The news is just there. You see it. You see what's happening. You know what's going on. Uh, let me just kind of pull up, see if I can find one of the parts there um, where we're speaking about this. I, well, I can see everything in there as I'm pulling along there, but I'm just trying, here we go, right here. Listen to a little bit of this here. Comments here, you said he thinks it's going to Beirut, but at the time wasn't for sure. Had to wait to see what direction that ship was going to go. Well, after about 24 hours, now we have the expected uh, course there. And on April the 4th, according to the, uh, the tra uh, sea tracking ship there, it is going to dock at Lebanon. 
Beirut, Lebanon, no less there. Great. All right, now, okay, that just it re helps refresh my memory as well. So what was it there? The ship actually would have not have been dark, docked there into Beirut, Lebanon until the next day. And then, of course, the other ship goes down to the Gulf of Aqaba, uh, goes through the Suez Canal, comes up through the Gulf of Aqaba, and par parks in Jordan's Aqaba port. Both of these ships full of military equipment. What for? I mean, that lets you know that they're surrounding Syria. And then, of course, as we uncovered more of the evidence, we found out that the U.S. back in February was working on a deal with the Lebanese government to bring in a bunch of military equipment into his country because of Syria. And then we found out more of the evidence as well that the United States was also working on bringing in more military equipment into Jordan because of what? Because of Syria. All right? Now, let's continue on. This is probably one of the most provocative reports of all the reports that I have uncovered. And this is actually what changed my own opinion because like many of you guys, I was ready for the United States to just bomb Assad, Bashar al-Assad right out of the water. Like you guys in, in, in 2013, when the stories that hit all over Western media, CNN and all these others, and by the way, Somebody keep, get a lot of people saying, I can't believe you use CNN. Guys, think about what you're saying before you say it. I use CNN to show you the nonsense they were bringing out the other day. That's what I was bringing up CNN for. It was ludicrous that CNN was reporting what they were reporting. All right. But anyway, Western propaganda media was out there spewing to the entire world that Bashar al-Assad had sarin gas on these children and hundreds of them died. And like you guys, you know, I was 100%, you know, they need to do something about it. This is horrible what happened. And I could not believe that Assad would be so low down and evil. But I figured like everybody else, well, you know, uh, he's just a terrorist like so many other people think. But you know, the difference though with me is that I'm, I'm willing to listen to objective arguments. And I'm willing to not just... You know, I, I, I am Jewish and I love my Jewish brothers and sisters, but I'm not willing just to go down a road of propaganda to wipe out all the Arabs in the world and think that we're the only ones that got everything right. That's not right. You know, I remember even because I'm a believer in Yeshua, I also remember that the first believers that were, that were Gentiles and even Jews as well were living in Damascus. And there's still a major, not well, not anymore. They killed so many of them off. It's not even funny. But the Eastern Orthodox Church, it's not the Roman Catholics. The Roman Catholics make up a little tiny minority inside of Syria. But that Eastern Orthodox, some of the ones that are very descendants and children of the first believers that were ever uh, inside of Syria. Because remember, what was Paul going to do? He was going to bring in all those Christians that were in Damascus and round them all up and put them in prison and torture them and everything else in Damascus. Didn't like their way of life, did he? No, he didn't. And that's what he was going to do. And still, the children of those believers from Syria, at one time there was over a million Christians living there in Syria. Well over a million. Don't think it's not a religious war as well? I think they're down to about 400,000. Why? Because U.S. backed, Turkish backed, Saudi Arabia backed, Qatar backed, rebels have murdered the Christians living in Syria. That's why the friends that I have that live in Syria that watch Israeli News Live have said over and over to me, Steve, let the people know the Christians stand with Bashar al-Assad because he's the only one that's ever cared about us. So when I have people out there saying that Bashar al-Assad is some evil, wicked guy and we got to do away with him, just remember he's the one, according to the Christians living in Syria, he's the only one that stood by him. Okay? And I'm telling you that directly from them. From them, they asked me to tell you that. All right? And two or three is a witness. And I've definitely got more than enough witnesses to back that up more than enough, all right? And I'm not saying that I agree with Orthodoxy, Eastern religions or nothing like that, you know? 
But you know what the thing is, is they still, they profess the name of Yeshua to be the name, the, to be Jesus Christ, to be the Messiah. While the, while, while the United States government is backing a bunch of Arabic thugs that are beheading children. And you think I'm going to stand with that instead? And I, I have an a, a appreciation for Prime Minister Netanyahu trying to stop Hezbollah from getting weapons into Lebanon to use against the Israeli people. I do appreciate that. But I don't want him supporting those terrorists over there that are beheading children. Not for one moment do I want him supporting something like that. All right? Listen to what Aaron, this is Aaron Erdem. The gas attack has been done already. He's not been to RT News as of yet. But this man, who by the way, he's Turkish, but he's Kurdish as far as his background, is standing for the truth of what happened in Syria. And being Kurdish, he's not pro-Assad either. But he was pro-truth. And he went to prison for standing for what was right. Because he went beyond saying what he had to say at the parliament. I'm going to play it. I'll stop it so I can do the translations as we go here. But I want you to hear for about two minutes of what he says here. All right. He says here at the beginning, some people are, are misappropriating the country's resources and betraying our trust. <laughs> By the way, there is an uproar amongst the parliament members that are there right now. The reason there is an uproar is because he has already accused the prime minister as well as President Erdogan of being complicit in allowing the sarin gas that came through Turkey to end up in Syria. All right, listen to what he says. Our ministers of eternal affairs is here at this moment, even though this issue is not. Uh, back up here. Sorry about that. Even though this issue is not within his field. Okay. I wish I could address my question to the ministers of justice, Burkat Buzdag, yesterday when he was here. As you all know, many children were murdered with sarin gas in the Middle East. There were various accusations about who uses sarin gas in our media. My question is about the Adna's chief public prosecutors. Investigations cases number 2013 forward slash 351, number 2013, forward slash 139, and indictment 2012, forward slash 120. Don't worry, the prosecutor is not from the parallel organization. The prosecution, uh, prosecutor, excuse me, the, with the government's desire and actions in the region. It is stated by the prosecutor in this case that raw materials for manufacturing sarin gas were delivered to the ISIS terrorist organization through contacts to this group's members. So the prosecutor initiated an investigation. Let me back up. So the prosecutor initiated an investigation about this. Here, please look at this. I am showing this to you. So he shows you that investigation report. So the individuals who were suspected to have carried out the transportation were arrested and put in prison. But just listen now, it's not all. The prosecutor ordered the telephones of those suspects to be wiretapped, which is also stated in the indictment. Mr. Ministers of Justice, Bozdag is also well aware of the details of this indictment because he himself went on air and made statements. 
But do you know what happened? In one week's time, this case was closed. The suspects were released and were allowed to leave Turkey by crossing over the Syrian border. Now I ask you, is this what you understand as justice? To set free people transporting sarin gas? I am asking. One journalist states that this is much worse than all I have said before. Do you know who says that the Republic of Turkey has dispatched ammunition to the Al-Qaeda terrorist organization by orders of the Prime Minister serving at the time? They won't like that one. Let me tell you, Governor of Adna, Hussein Avni Kos, here the records made by the governor are here. If any of you would like to have them, you can photocopy them. The governor states that he instructed the trucks to go there under the prime minister's orders. Do you know what uh, Irfan Fadan, the prosecutor who arrested the journalist Ken uh, Dundar said? He said that Khan Dandar has no, not falsely defamed the government or, or the Prime Minister. He said that Khan Dafar merely disclosed a state, a state secret, in other words, a fact. Do, do you realize what, what the man just said? He says that they... Disclose, do you know what's the, Do you know who says that the Republic, Republic of Turkey has dispatched ammunition to the Al Qaeda and terrorist organization? All right. Then he says, Governor of Adna, Hussein Avni Kos. He says, if any of you would like to have it, he's going. He's willing to give you a copy. The governor states that they instructed the trucks to go there. Okay, under the prime minister's orders. And he said, do you know what Irfan Fadan, the prosecutor who arrested the journalist Khan Dafar, said? This was the prosecutor. All right. Let me pull it up. He said that Khan Dundar has not falsely defamed the government or the prime minister. All right. He said, all right. Now watch what he says next. He said that Khan Dundar merely disclosed a state secret, in other words, a fact. I mean, where did the sarin gas come from? Who had the sarin gas? You see, you have to understand, even after the attack, now granted, yes, Bashar al-Assad had chemical weapons before that attack in 2013. Then why was sarin gas being smuggled in through Turkey with the prime minister's full knowledge? And then even as Aaron Erdem will bring out right after they were released, not long after that, the attack happens. And of course, it's put in the hands of Al Qaeda, Al Nusra, ISIS. I mean, I, you'll have the link to this in the description below because they have the title, subtitles on here. This is a Turkish parliament member, an MP of the Turkish, go Turkish government, indicts his own government for smuggling sarin gas to these different organizations inside the country. Anything to get the United States to invade. They wanted the U.S. to invade. That's why I said Erdogan, the coup that heard that happened in Turkey, that was all staged. The U.S. and Turkey worked together. Why? To get the Turkish military in the northern part of Syria so when the time was right, the United States with its own coalition with all the different uh, uh, countries working together there would be able to overthrow Bashar al-Assad and have Turkey already inside of there and to get Russia to permit it. And to prove that I'm right on this, and to prove that I'm right when I say that Erdogan wanted the U.S. to attack, what did Erdogan state? Now Erdogan supposedly is on the bad with the United States because why? 
the United States back to coup against his country and he's telling him get your military out of my country right it's what Erdogan is saying right and then suddenly when President Trump bombs the air base in Syria Erdogan's like Ray great job President Trump you should have done more you should have done more did he not show his colors or what so much for the United States being the bad guy. And I guess nobody will pay attention that the, the, the coup was all staged, will they? But it showed his colors. And another reason it was staged was to get the nuclear weapons. Some of those weapons moved from Turkey to Romania to be able to use against Russia. And I'm not saying that Putin's not in on this whole game as well. Maybe he is. All right. So see, I'm not, I'm not here some, as some people like to say, I bet he's on the Kremlin payroll. I tell you what, I'll give you a million dollars to whoever can give you my Kremlin payroll because I ain't got no Kremlin payroll. It's only because of the love of the people that, that appreciate me telling the truth that we're able to say anything. Because it's your love and supporting the work that we do here that helps us to stay going to bring you the prophetic insights and to bring you the truth, true, truest news as we possibly can, not an agenda. And as far as President Assad and President Putin and all these guys here and, and Kim Jong-un and stuff like that, I'm not pro any of them. I'm pro-truth. That's what I am pro, pro-truth. And as far as this whole idea, even like with Kim Jong-un, I believe it's all staged as well. Why? They want to bring down America. You have freedom of religion. You have, you have freedom of speech. They want to silence that. Anyway, Aaron Erdem, that I mean, that is such a powerful evidence. And it also exonerated uh, Seymour Hersh. Remember Seymour Hersh, the journalist that also exposed the fact that Hillary Clinton had made sure that the sarin gas that was in Libya was smuggled out and would be used inside of Syria? That was a bombshell, wasn't it? Anyway, let's move on. So, here we have another article here starting to show the move of the Jordanian U.S. forces up to uh, and this is a Russian article, by the way, edaily.com uh, forward slash RU News. It is in the Russian language. It says, Southern Front in Syria, Jordan and the United States put Russia in front of a choice. Actions of Jordan and the United States in Syria, Russia puts before a choice response. We are talking about a possible beginning of a U.S., British, Jordanian operation in the south part of the country on the preparations for which have reported an Arabic newspaper, the Al Hayat. Global research site and other sources, according to the latter, is now in the border of Syria and Jordan. There is a concentration of U.S. British forces on Jordan's border, according to this article here. All right. Now, don't forget, as we also showed you here with uh, uh, Lorenzo on Already Happened, Liberty Passion carry, carrying U.S. military vehicles headed toward Aqua by Jordan after Trump meeting with King Abdullah II. Remember that? Going through the Suez all the way down and coming back up again and porting right there at the Gulf of Aqaba. Huge ship carrying hundreds of military vehicles there. All right, now here comes another bombshell, another uh, Russian uh, article here. But you're also going to see this article here is using an Italian journalist. That Italian journalist is on this site here. I'll bring you back to it in a moment. But so it's not just all the Russians, it's also the Italians noticing things. Base Camp Darby, U.S. preparing Yugoslavia scenario in Syria. This is some new news that we have just uh, come up with that bol bolsters a long drawn up plan by the United States to overthrow the Syrian government and it's about to take place. Sending American transport ship weapons to Syrian opposition suggests the U.S. preparing for a balkanize of Syria. Such a conclusion was an Italian journalist, Man, uh, Manlio Denanci, an analyzing the route of the uh, Roro Liberty passion of the Italian ports in Jordan and Saudi Arabia. According to him, the Pentagon has built a power line of future occupation of Syria by an analogy with the logistics of Libya's capture in 2011. So going all the way back to 2011, they've been planning this according to what he's talking about here. 
Huge cargo ship, Liberty Passion, refers to the type of ships, Roro, which are designed to carry vehicles and cargo on wheels. Its length is 200 meters. Roro Dex 12 has a total area of 50 square meters. Uh, its transport capacity is equivalent of 6.5 thousand cars. Marching 24, uh, March 24th, the ship was at the Italian port of Lavrano from Romania uh, Constanta to load the weapons on board of a U.S. military base camp Darby on March 24th. The whole point is, guys, this is all pre-planned. According to uh, Manlio uh, Denanci, that Walker is not a one-off U.S. ship will operate from uh, Lavrano in Aquaba and Jeddah each month, and its transit potential will be, will be strengthened due to the ships of the same class with similar Liberty Pride titles, Pride of Freedom, the Liberty Promise, the Promise, Promise of Freedom, also known by the Corporation Liberty Global Logistics. The choice of the Tucson port is due to the implementation of the maritime administration of the U.S. Maritime Security Program, but Domenici Connect's approach is in the port of Italy with the proximity of the military base of Camp Darby. Previously, the material and technical base of the U.S. Army is not just used for military actions in the Mediterranean region, the Middle East, and Africa, and particularly it is from, it is from here through the port of Lavrano and uh, Pisa Military Airport, Bomb delivered to the wars in Iraq, Libya, and Yugoslavia. So the base is being used all over again. Now, again, I'll include the article in the link below so you can look at this for yourself. But this is, this is uh, um, when we're looking here at uh, uh, Manlio uh, de Munchi, this is his article where they took it from. Now, I'm just going to read to you a portion of his article here. Uh, and again, that's about halfway into there. You can see it's a very long article from Camp Darby U.S. Weapons for the War in Syria and Yemen. It is in English. Um, let's go right into it. Um, documentary sources, Asia News 2 and others report that on its inaugural trip, Liberty Passion transported 250 military vehicles from Lavrano to Aquaba, the Jordanian port. The ship arrived at Aquaba on April the 7th, making its way there via the Suez Canal two days before in Washington. President Trump received King Abdullah for a second time since February, thus confirming U.S. support to Jordan against the terrorist threat coming from Syria. However, it is precisely in Jordan that uh, for a year, U.S., British, and French instructors have been training militants belonging to the Free Syrian Army for terrorist attacks in Syria. Sound familiar? Sure it does. Various reports indicate that an increasing number of U.S. troops fitted out with tankers and armored vehicles are moving to the Jordan-Syrian border. Wow. It's not just me that says that, right? It's not just the Russians saying that. What do you know? The Italian journalist also knows about these things. The objective? To take possession using even Jordanian troops of the southern band of the Syrian territory where special U.S. and British forces are operating in support of the Free Syrian Army. Where are they operating? In Syrian territory. What do you know? Which is fighting with ISIS. As early as February, President Trump had discussed with King, King Abdullah the possibility of establishing safe zones in Syria. Safe zones is a code for balkanizing Syria. Now an option given that following Russia's intervention, it is no longer possible to control the entire territory. So they figure they're not going to get everything because Russia is there. U.S. arms are used for this and other military operations, which include the Saudi war, which causes massacres in Yemen. These arms lead from uh, Lebrano, a city which Pope Francis, on the invitation of Mayor Nogarin, will probably visit. Yesterday, once again, Pope Francis denounced the trafficking of arms, which allows money to be made from men and women shedding blood. Meanwhile, several residents of Lavrano celebrate the fact that the Tuscan port has been chosen as the stopover for Liberty Global Logistics for, the, for this creates huge prospects for development. Well, you know the Pope says that, but you know what? That's just to make yourself look good. It doesn't mean that that's what the Pope really is interested in. So Manlio uh, Denunci is the author of this article here. And of course, as we've stated, they're there. And of course, could easily be used for a takeover of Damascus. Remember, even though Russia spoke strong words with Iran that they would, they would 
help protect Assad if there's another missile attack against him, there is no such agreement that Russia is obligated to do so. And Russia could allow President Bashar al-Assad to be taken down. All right, as we get ready to close here, let's look at a couple other things. New declassified CIA, CIA memo presents blueprint for Syrian regime collapse. This has been all the way since 1986 under Ronald Reagan. They've been planning for the collapse of the Syrian government. The CIA has declassified document. You can see that now. And of course, Bashar al-Assad's father definitely was no good guy, not even in the slightest bit. Uh, the Al Monitor, though, I do want to bring one article up here in closing here. Israel is under the Israel pulse. Israel should back Assad. And uh, the, uh, the guy here, Jackie Hoogie, he really does bring out a very good reasoning for this. And that is because of the difference. He says here, just to give you a little bit of insight, um, what Israel should learn from these, uh, excuse me, the Ba'ath regime was cruel to its citizens and robbed them of basic rights. That was under Assad's father. And its leaders should pay the fullest price so that justice is served. But in choosing between one bad thing and another, the balance tips towards the regime. The Israeli security establishment should gradually abandon its emerging alliance with the Syrian rebels and elegantly work with its friends in the West to stabilize Damascus as much as possible. It must not fortify the regime's enemies, develop friendly relations with them, nor weaken its rule. The bitter consequences of the tactic could hit Jerusalem like a boomerang. The survival of Damascus regime guarantees stability on Israel's northern border and is keystone to its national security. The Syrian regime is secular, tacity, recognizes Israel's right to exist under Bashar al-Assad. What do you know? and does not crave death, it does not have messianic religious beliefs, and does not aim to establish an Islamic caliphate in the area it controls. Since Syria is a sovereign nation, there is any, uh, any, as an array of means of putting pressure on it in any case of conflicts of crisis. But yet, uh, the, 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 the crazy lunatic in Turkey, President Erdogan, basically declares himself as a caliphate, and he always turns against Israel. But they recognize Israel's right to exist. Ynetnews.com, the very article. Assad said, we'll press Hamas to recognize Israel. Swedish Foreign Minister Belt tells Bill and Syrian President sincere and desire to jumpstart peace negotiations with Israel. Well, what do you know? The man was trying to make peace with Israel. But when John Kerry was there and couldn't get that pipeline brought through there by, you know, U.S. and their partners, and they took Russia instead, and of course Assad rejected all of your GMO uh, products, that's when everything went sour, didn't it? Interesting, isn't it? Was willing to press Hamas to recognize Israel when he was also recognizing Israel. I think that's interesting. Now, this is the kind of guys, though, that the U.S. is backing right now. U.S. backed moderate rebels behead a child near Aleppo. I covered that story when it happened. It says members of an American-held back rebel group in Syria beheaded a young child in a grisly execution video. The video uh, surfaced early Tuesday of members of uh, the Harkat Na Nor al Dina al Zinki and captured child in Handarat near Aleppo. The young boy, who appears to be pre uh, pubescent, pre pubescent, is then executed on the back of a pickup truck. The gruesome videotaped murder of a child drew outrage of social media and promise of an inquiry from the group's leadership, which has previously received U.S. made weapons and American funding. The group no longer gets such backing. Well, they don't anymore. But a lot of the other groups there that have been that are being backed even now by the U.S. do the same such gruesome, ungodly, nasty acts, including the White Helmets. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. If you really do believe that we're trying to tell you the truth, we do need your support to keep this type broadcast coming. Stand with us, won't you? IsraeliNewsLive.org or .co.il you can donate there online and as well on our YouTube channel. You go to our YouTube channel and you go to our main page there where so many of you have subscribed. Right there above the subscribe button is a donate place right there. And we thank you for your support.